It's time now for the big question in which we tackle a major news story of the day. And tonight, a top lawyer has said that the government's Stop the Boats legislation would be a clear breach of the Refugee Convention, with other legal experts condemning the policy as racist, illegal and unworkable. So is the legislation legally flawed and is it immoral or even racist? To debate this, I'm delighted to welcome Niall Gardner, the director of the Margaret Thatcher Centre for uh, Freedom and a former advisor to Mrs Thatcher, and Ivan Sampson, an immigration lawyer at Privatus Law. Uh, can I start with you, uh, please, Niall Gardner? Do you think that this legislation is unworkable and racist? Uh, Mark, th uh, thanks very much for having me on the show uh, today. And in my view, I think this legislation is a, is a very big step in the right direction. Um, and I think that uh, it sets out a, a clear agenda for ending the small boats migrant crisis. And at the end of the day, the British government has to defend the sovereignty of the United Kingdom. It has to defend the safety and security of the people of the United Kingdom. Uh, and I think this legislation uh, certainly is a, is a very big step forward in the right direction. Now, having said that, I, I do believe that uh, we are going to see major issues, of course, with the ECHR. And Britain ultimately will have to leave the European Convention on Human Rights. Uh, but as for all of these accusations of racism, uh, these comparisons of Britain with Nazi Germany that we're seeing from, from the likes of Gary Lineker, this is absolutely outrageous. Uh, this is not a racist uh, agenda. Uh, this is about defending the borders of the United Kingdom. These policies also will save lives. After all, these uh, human traffickers are putting uh, the lives of these migrants at risk crossing the channel. And also, uh, they're coming over from France. The last I checked, France is not a third world country. If they want to seek asylum, they can claim it there in France. Large numbers of those crossing the channel as well are economic migrants, including uh, tens of thousands of Albanians who have attempted to cross over. And so this idea that this is some sort of cruel uh, policy put forward by the British government is absolutely ludicrous and fundamentally ridiculous. Uh, Ivan Sampson, you are an immigration lawyer at Privatus Law. Uh, what do you think of this legislation? Um, surely nobody should be coming to the UK from France. Um, well, it, it's an immoral uh, law simply because it's unlawful. It breaches Article 13 of the Convention. It breaches Article 2 and Article 5. I bet your other guest has never read the European Convention, and neither has you read the uh, Refugee uh, Convention actually, either. Yeah. Um, then he would know that it breaches all three articles. And the, the government's use of Section, um, a, a Section 19B of the Human Rights Act is a clear abuse of power. It, the Section 19B was never intended for to be used in these situations. It was powers given to the Secretary of State to use in emergency situations. Look, the numbers haven't gone up at all. All that's happened is they're visible on the boats and not in the lorries. If you look at the numbers over the many years that people have been coming across illegally, the problem is the government doesn't have secure borders because it doesn't have systems to protect the borders of this country. And so what they're trying to do is demonise uh, ref refugees coming here. Um, th this legislation will not get off the ground simply because it's unlawful. It breaches the European Convention and the Human Rights Act. And, and therefore, it will be challenged in the courts. Uh, however, what if uh, Britain disposes of its membership of the Convention on Human Rights, Mr. Sampson? That won't stop people coming across the channel. There's only one thing that's going to stop the people coming across the channel is if we send them back to France. We need a bilateral agreement similar to the Dublin Convention. What we need to do is if you come across the channel, you will be sent back to France. That is where their asylum application should be considered. And if they're granted in France, and if they have family members in the UK, they should be allowed to come and join them here. If they haven't, then they should be dispersed equally amongst the European countries. You know, of every 10,000 people in our country, we take seven asylum applications. In Europe, they take 14. We take a fraction of what our neighbours in Europe take. It's simply not true. We've been overrun by refugees. It's simply a headline-grabbing, a politically motivated uh, policy by the government. Fact is, we don't take enough refugees. We should be taking 100,000 a year. That's our fair share of the global problem.
Ivan Sampson, uh, many of my viewers and listeners would reject what you've said. Uh, they would argue that you're gaslighting them. Uh, 45,000 people entering the country illegally last year. Many of my viewers and listeners find images of people uh, landing on dinghies, which is very dangerous, uh, on our shores, sometimes chucking documentation and their mobile phone in the water as they cross, sometimes running for the hills when they get here. This is unacceptable to the British people. It is, and the government's charged with preventing that and removing them. That is the problem. Look, we can't control people coming across the cat channel. The, the borders are too wide. We can't, what we can do is have systems in place to deter them. Now, as I said to you, if I knew that if I came across the channel, I'm getting sent back to France, I wouldn't bother making the trip. We need bilateral agreements with the French that work. I mean, th this bromance between Sunak and Macron and throwing half a billion pounds at him is not going to work. The French are not motivated to stop people crossing the channel. Now, if they have to decide the claims in France, if that's where they have to be de decided, and they know full well that they're coming back to France, they will stop them setting off in the first place. Those are the agreements we need. The agreements that we have with them is basically throwing money down the pan. I won't hold my breath. Niall Gardner. Yeah, so I, I think, you know, firstly, this idea that, uh, you know, Macron is going to strike a, a deal to take back uh, all of these illegal migrants is just pure fantasy. And the French have said categorically they're not going to do that. Um, I, I do uh, believe that it's fundamentally wrong to be sending large sums of money over to France. This should be France's problem. They should be dealing with it. But the reality is Emmanuel Macron hates Brexit. Uh, he will do his best to undermine Brexit Britain. He has no intention whatsoever of striking a deal to have these uh, illegal migrants return. And this idea as well that these are, you know, largely refugees, that's not true at all. The vast majority are economic migrants actually here. So I think we have to make that fundamental distinction. And this, this uh, idea as well of uh, that Britain should take 100,000 refugees a, a year, I mean, I think it's absolutely uh, preposterous, frankly. Um, and when you look at the attacks coming from the UN Refugee Agency, Look who's on the executive committee, actually, of the UN Agency for Refugees. It includes China, Russia, Iran, Venezuela, Zimbabwe, some of the world's worst human rights violators, now lecturing the British people and the British government over immigration policy. It's absolutely, utterly ridiculous. Uh, Ivan Sampson, what would you say to my viewers and listeners whose communities have been impacted by migrant hotels? I say that you should complain to your local MP for not deciding up asylum applications within a reasonable time. Look, in 1998, um, sorry, in 2002, we had 84,000 asylum applications a year. Um, when I first started as a young lawyer, we were having something like 100,000 asylum applications. Oh, we've just lost the line there uh, to... Uh... To Mr. Sampson, but thank you, uh, top immigration Sorry, that's lawyer. The reality of oh, he's work. Back. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Having one of those nights, uh, Mr. Sampson, thank you for joining us, immigration lawyer at Privatus Law. And my thanks to Niall Gardner, the director of the Margaret Thatcher Centre for Freedom and a former advisor to Mrs. T. Thank you, gentlemen. A fascinating debate. Your reaction, Mark at GBNews.UK.